Welcome back my sweet friends to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy, my husband is Paul. We're an early retirement, debt and mortgage free couple living in the state of New York. And our channel basically shows you how to have a full abundant life while spending less money. Today is Tuesday, which means it's viewer's choice or challenge. And we've got a good one for you today. Our video again is pretty jam packed. We are going to be talking a little bit about inflation and what's going on right now and what we really, really need to start doing and being aware of. And we hope this is total encouragement after you hear it. Then we're going to be addressing a question that Kara and Lucy had. Kara wanted to know about subbing foods for less expensive foods. And I thought that was a great idea. And Lucy wanted to know how to stretch protein for a family of four. And we're going to show you both of those things today. And we're also gonna talk about a grain that sometimes gets overlooked that during these times is very economical and a real great meal stretcher. So sit back, relax, and let's get to this video. First thing, let's address what's on everyone's mind, inflation. And right now, what's happening? There's not just one area that is inflated in price. There are many areas. There's food, there's home heating oil, there's gasoline, there's electricity, the list goes on. So it's not only like we can address one aspect of this, because right now it's coming at us at every angle, but no need to get discouraged. What we have to remember is we have to handle and take care of and address the aspects of this inflation that we have control of. No, we cannot control price right now, but what we do have control over, how we use the resources we're paying for. What do I mean? The gasoline, you gotta pay what they're asking. I mean, what are we going to do? There are alternate means of transportation, but if you do drive a car right now, we're stuck paying what they're asking. But we are in control of how far we are driving for non-essential reasons. We have that control. So yes, you may need to commute back and forth, but do you need to drive three towns over to go out to dinner? Do you need to drive to get your coffee every morning if it's not on your way? Well, you shouldn't even be buying coffee out anyway, but I'm just saying, we have that control of how much non-essential driving we do, just to keep that in the back of your mind. The food, food is another. Food, we can't go in and mark down our own prices, but we do have control over the food coming into our home. Can we shop clearance racks? Can we start finding alternative products that cost less? And I'm gonna show you today. We're gonna to take a little tiny bit of protein and feed four people. I'm gonna also show you how to take a grain, flavor it a multitude of ways. So we need to get down and we need to get creative and we need to get serious. Home heating oil. Well, how high are we gonna set our thermostats? We may come down a degree or two. Not to be uncomfortable, but just a degree. That's it, maybe two. You're gonna save oil that way. Electricity, shut those lights out. Put your air conditioning up just a little bit. If you normally keep it on 70, go to 72. Not to make yourself uncomfortable or sick. You don't wanna sit in a hot house. That's not what I'm saying. But there are little things that we do have control over. And right now, they're talking recessions coming, recessions coming. Well, personally, I think we're already partially in a recession between you and I, but I am not an economic major. I don't know a lot about that. All I know is how to help you 
get through this and stretch our dollar. Start turning your lights off if you're not in a room. If you're not watching TV, turn it off. Don't leave it run and go around the house and do your chores. Everything needs to be looked at in a very, very different way right now. We can't just do what we want when we want with these things that we're paying a premium price for. We have to really be diligent about how we're using them. And in part, by doing that, it will make us feel like we have some control over what's going on out there within our own lives and within our home. And that is wonderful. That is what motivates us by saying, okay, you want to charge me $5 a gallon for gas? Well, guess what? I'm not going to take that road trip on Sunday anymore. I'm going to cook out in my own yard and save the fuel. You want me to pay $4 for a five pound bag of potatoes? Guess what? This week I'm not going to buy your potatoes. And we can't do it to the detriment of ourselves though, because we have to keep the food in the house and we have to keep stocking up. When you see those items on sale, get them in the home, please. And I'm gonna show you a real small food haul in a minute that we did exactly that. Buy only the produce that you need. Please don't bring tons of produce in the house and let it go to waste. You see, shelf-stable food that your family eats on sale, bring it in, now is the time. We don't know what autumn is going to hold. So the more we can stock up on low-priced items, the better off we're going to be. Pick and choose right now. We do have the control of where our money is going. They may not think that we think we do, but ultimately, we do. And it's just a matter of staying on top of it, being diligent, stretching the dollar as far as you can, and maybe once in a while doing without. Doing without non-essential purchases. Not essential purchases, but those non-essential purchases. And even like that $10 McDonald's drive through or Burger King, Wendy's, wherever you all eat, take that $10 and buy some tuna, buy some canned tomatoes, buy some veggies. Now's the time we really need to get serious. Yes, prices are high. Yes, they are. Nobody can deny that right now. Those essential purchases have to be front and foremost right now. Just a little pep talk just to encourage you. So we hope this was helpful. Now I'm gonna turn the camera around, we're gonna get in the kitchen, and I'm gonna show you a super small food haul of just some stock up items. So let's turn this camera around. I am going to show you something that we never ever buy, but the price was really, really good, and we have been having house guests, as you know, in and out, and I figured this would be super fun to have in the house, even for snacks. I'll give a box to my son. But the Kellogg cereals were $1.49 each with a digital coupon. Then I had two coupons that if you buy two boxes, you got another dollar off, and I had two of those. So the Kellogg cereal literally came to a dollar a box and they're 13.5 ounces. I got two Frosted Flakes and Apple Jacks, which I know my son is gonna take, and then some Frosted Mini Wheats. This is something we normally never ever buy, but at that price, I figured I would stick them in the pantry. And when we have overnight guests over the summer, this is something fun, like I said, for breakfast or a snack. Olives, 99 cents a can. I don't know if you've seen the price of olives lately, but the cheapest I've seen them is $1.50. So I bought three cans. They're gonna go right into the pantry. I bought three bananas, which were 59 cents a pound. Again, we're sticking with produce only what we use. Now, the bowl and basket cheese. Two packages were $3. 
and this is two eight ounce packages so three dollars a pound i don't know where else i would get cheese for that price i picked gouda for myself i love gouda and paul picked colby jack so three dollars that's a great stock up item the carrots two pounds were actually cheaper than the two one pound bags the one pound bags are now up to a dollar 50 for a pound and this two pound bag was 250 save 50 cents right there we got one english cucumber that it was a dollar 25 these are actually cheaper and better actually they look better feel better than regular cucumbers now at this point the real reason i went to shop right colavita's on sale 99 cents a bag so we did buy 10 bags. I got three of the rigatoni. I got an orzo. I got a ziti. I got three of the bocantini and two of the penne. Oh my goodness. They were almost $2 a bag last time I looked. So this was a great little haul. We paid $24.41 for this haul. And what about my colavita pasta? So good, honestly, but I wasn't buying it. I refused to pay the $1.89 they wanted. We just didn't buy it. Thank God we had it stocked up in the back. So we were good, but it was time to restock. So hopefully this will hold us for a while. So 99 cents, we were really happy. So that is how you have to shop right now. And don't let your food supply run low, please. I know we all like to eat out of our pantry, freezer, fridge, and I encourage that as well. But right now we wanna make sure we have a steady supply of food, especially shelf stable food. So now I wanna to talk to you about the humble grain of rice. Whether it be brown rice, white rice, jasmine rice, whatever kind of rice you enjoy eating. So many times I think we overlook rice as being a really great staple in the house. You've seen us buy 20 pound bags and then we separate them into freezer bags, gallon freezer bags, and we put them in our freezer. They last so long. It's, it's a great way to do it. When we need it, we take a bag out, put it in the refrigerator, and then when that gallon bag is done, we pull the next one out of the freezer. And usually in the 20 pound bags, they go on sale and it's a great price. I have a ton of recipes and articles going back to the 80s and 90s. Now think about this, the 90s were 30 years ago. Just saying, okay? They were 30 years ago. What I did was I, through the years, collect articles and recipes out of women's magazines. And one I just came across was a little blurb I had cut out back in the 80s on how to flavor rice. A different way to flavor your rice. Mix it up. It is a great economical grain. I'm gonna share this with you right now. For these times, this is a great little article. So here you go. These are just some great add-ins to give rice that little extra flavor, take it out of the ordinary. The first one is the BLT, bottled bacon bits or fresh bacon, diced tomato, and finely shredded lettuce. The next one is lemon herb. Put in some freshly grated lemon peel, some lemon juice, and dill or parsley. Tex-Mex canned diced green chiles and some corn, sliced scallion and some sour cream. That's like taking it all the way up to like a really good side salad. Fruit and nut, currants, raisins, snip dried apricot, sweet and flaked coconut, some almonds, another great idea. Peas and cheese. Thawed frozen petite peas, grated Parmesan cheese, some chopped parsley, and a little bit of butter. Creamy garlic, garlic herb cheese spread, and bottled diced pimentos. And if you don't have garlic herb cheese spread, you could put in some fresh garlic and some cream cheese. I think that would work perfect. Crunchy Asian. 
sliced scallions, chopped peanuts or cashews, and a few splashes of teriyaki sauce. Wasn't that great? I think we don't realize how versatile rice is. And rice is pretty tasteless, so it takes on whatever flavoring you add to it. I use chicken broth sometimes to boil my rice in or vegetable broth. It comes out wonderful. But these were just some great suggestions of ramping up the common rice. Now let's get into the kitchen. And thanks to Kara and thanks to Lucy, we're going to show you how to take some super humble ingredients and turn them into a complete meal for four people. So let's get into the kitchen. This recipe is very easy and very frugal. I will link the original recipe down below, which probably would be over the top delicious, but it used a lot of expensive ingredients. And what I did was I saw this recipe and I said, let me tweak it. Let's see how low we can go. So the first thing it called for was a half a pound of chicken breasts. Well, this is what we're using. We're using a half of chicken breasts. Stay with me, please. You know I never let you down. And this is grilled and thoroughly cooked. It is a half of a leftover chicken breast. The original recipe called for two and a half cups of cheese and a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Well, we're knocking that way down. We've got a piece of pepper jack left and we've got some Swiss left and that's gonna be perfect. It called for a half a cup of wine and a half a cup of broth. We're using all broth. Wine is expensive. It also called for sauteed mushrooms and red peppers. We are subbing out a bag of frozen mixed vegetables. This is about two cups that I just ran under water. It called for an egg, which we're keeping the same, some onion, a clove of garlic, two tablespoons of butter or oil, which we're keeping the same, two tablespoons of flour, and then two cups of fully cooked rice that has been chilled so it's cold. All right, let's get the pie plate. Yep, pie plate. First thing I'm doing is greasing my pie pan with the butter wrapper that I keep in the refrigerator. So that's perfect. So all I'm doing is beating the egg. And I've got my two cups of rice right here. So I'm going to add the egg right to the rice. And I'm going to take a little bit of black pepper and we're going to add that into the rice as well. And I'm just going to mix and coat the rice with the egg. And now I'm going to take that rice and I'm going to put it in to the greased pie plate. We're going to press it on the bottom and we're going to press it up the sides. I have never made this, but this was a perfect recipe that called for a lot of expensive ingredients and we are totally gonna revamp it. Now make sure you press it down as best you can. So this is gonna be our pie crust pretty much. Super economical. Remember the little piece of pepper jack cheese? Came out to, I don't even know how much this would be, maybe a half a cup. What I'm gonna do is just sprinkle it on top of the crust. With something like cheese, a little bit goes a long way. For flavor, remember cheese is protein. I'm just gonna push that into the crust. Now I'm going to bake this in a 350 degree oven just for about 20 minutes. I melted the two tablespoons of butter in the pan and honestly, you could probably do one tablespoon, but being that we're cutting back on so many other ingredients, I'm gonna leave the two tablespoons. Now I'm gonna add that cut up onion. 
and we're gonna saute this for a minute until they get nice and soft. The onions look nice and soft. I'm now going to squeeze a clove of garlic in. And we're just gonna let that cook for a second, just till it's fragrant. Now I'm gonna sprinkle in the two tablespoons of flour. Coat the, the onion and the garlic with the flour. Just want to cook the flour so you don't have that raw flour taste. Now I'm adding the one cup of chicken broth. Remember, keep chicken bones when you cook a whole chicken. Those veggie scraps, make your own broth. It costs nothing. Those items are going to be going into the garbage. And instead, you're going to make some beautiful broth out of them. Now I'm going to add my vegetables to it. This is just mixed frozen vegetables, but you could use whatever you want, whatever kind of vegetables. And then that half of a chicken breast gave us a cup of chicken that Paul cubed. So this is really coming out to be quite a substantial meal. We're going to cook this, I guess about five minutes or so, keep stirring it. I'm also going to add a little Italian seasoning, but you can use whatever kind of seasoning you'd like. Here's our rice crust after 20 minutes cooking at 350. It looks really good. Now I'm going to take our mixture. I cooked it for about another five minutes, similar to a pot pie, definitely. And the bottom is not a flour crust, it's actually rice. Make sure you scrape that pan, get all that goodness. That other little piece of Swiss cheese, Paul grated that and we're gonna put that right on top. Now we have used much, much less cheese than the recipe called for. Like I said, the original recipe probably would be over the top, but I'm sure this is going to be just as delicious. Now I'm going to put this in the oven at 350 for about 25 minutes. This cooked for 25 minutes. We took it out of the oven and we just let it cool for 10 minutes to let it set up. Now we're going to cut. Oh wow, look at this. I was so afraid it wouldn't cut clean with the rice on the bottom. Now what I would pair this with, some cut up fresh fruit, a fruit salad on the side, a green salad on the side, I mean, if you wanted to serve four people, I mean, you could cut this pie into four pieces and they would be really substantial. This is beyond what I thought it would be. I'm gonna have Paul taste it for you. Here it is, the vegetable chicken pot pie with rice crust. Let me get some of that rice crust. It's actually pretty cool. Wow. That's got such a spring flavor to it. Fresh. What a great way to stretch your protein. The vegetables, of course, are good for you. The rice makes a great little base. There's a crunch to it. How is it? Like taste? It tastes absolutely wonderful. It's perfect the way it is. You could put a dollop of sour cream Ooh, good idea. on there if you want, just to you know kick it up a minute. Maybe a little hot, uh, little hot sauce. But no, this is fantastic. Yeah, this is really good. This will easily feed four people, definitely. It was so delicious. Paul approved? Paul approved. What did you think? I thought it was delicious. Really, really good. Yeah, it's just amazing how, you know, you, you see the ingredients and you don't believe it kind of a thing. And then when you taste it, it's like, wow, this is really good. It so, works. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I was so glad you liked it. Yeah. yeah. And we have to remember, and I'll say this again, eggs are protein, cheese is protein, and the chicken is protein. So I think this was a great way to bump up the protein without just using meat. Give it a try and let us know what you think. Today's question of the day, how do you make basic meal stretchers like pasta, like rice, like quinoa, couscous, all those kind of meal stretchers. A little bit more tasty and meal worthy. What do you do to those common ingredients to just jazz them up a little and make them delicious? Because I think 
we look at rice and we automatically assume butter and salt. Okay, it is delicious, I love rice. But could we do a little more like we just saw all those add-ins? Pasta, well you could put tomato sauce on it or you could put cheese. Tell me what you do. Take these humble meal stretchers, potatoes even, and tell me how you make them extra special. We would appreciate it and so would our viewers because this is how we are gonna get through this together, as I always say. We're your cheerleaders. So thank you again for sending in your ideas for Tuesday's viewer choice or challenge. Keep them coming. Please send your ideas for our videos to frugalmoneysaver at gmail.com. Don't put your ideas for a video in the comments, please. They'll just get lost in the shuffle. Send them to the email and then I can go through them. I sort them and then every week I pick one or two out and we showcase your idea in a video. And you guys have been great about sending us ideas. We have so many great ideas, but we want them to keep coming, please. So thank you so much for spending this time with us. We appreciate you so much. We ask you to subscribe if you haven't. Give this a big thumbs up. It really does help us so much just to get our videos out there in the world of YouTube. There are so many wonderful channels. So when you give us a thumbs up, it just helps us get a little bit out there. So thank you. We ask you to stay well. We ask you to stay safe. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, we'll see you soon.